Hey guys, my name is Fidiski for No Korean and today we'll try to talk about how to prevent collation and hash tables. So these are various basic techniques that is used commonly. Uh, so let's get started. So we remember that there is a, a key to a hash table and the hash function will convert the key into a hash code. And sometimes the result will be the same. So it will cause collision, right? As we've thought about it before. So I want, what do I want to do in these techniques is um, move the um, items in other positions maybe so that it doesn't overwrite the original uh, data. So okay. Linear probing. Linear probing is a technique where you add one to the position until an empty box is found. So for instance, I already have a data here. So I want to enter a new data. It will cause collision if I do or don't anticipate this. But since the um, position is one, I will add one to it. Two, right? So it, this will move here. Two. All right? So let's say I have another, another data and I also wanted to add it at one because um, luck, unluckily the hash code is also one. So what do I want to do? Add one to the position. Add one to the position so it's two. But because two is also already occupied, I will add one again. So it will be three. So we go here. Okay. So linear probing is uh, um, one of the methods to prevent collision. However, it's bad because it's quite ba a bad method because it will cause clustering of data. So the data will kind of like uh, group together here and it's not distributed equally and so on and so forth. But yeah, you get me. Still easy? Let's go on. There's this other trick called quadratic probing. It's very similar to linear probing. However, the difference is um, what you want to increment, uh, what you want to move is not just by plus one plus one, but you add n squared starting from n plus one to the position until an empty box is found. So for instance, I have a data already here, a data already here, um, and I want to enter a data here because the hash code is one. So it's already occupied. So when, uh, oh sorry, let's say we have a data here. So um, the position is one, right? But then it's already occupied, so we want to plus n, which is n is originally 1, so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, so we move to 2, but it's already occupied again, but then we can do 1 squared is equal to 2, sorry, and 2 squared is here is equal to 5. Again, it's already filled, so what we want to do is 1 plus 3 squared, which is 10. However, let's say we do not have 10 here and we wanted to make this a uh, circular array, therefore it will fall here, right? Because uh, 10 is not here, so it will fall to a circular array. And yeah, that's a uh, quadratic probing. It will vary more than uh, linear probing, but it's still not good enough. So there's another trick. So there's another trick called uh, double hashing. Double hashing is a method where you have two functions, one for the hash codes and one for the increment if the collision occur. So you have one function here, fx, and let's say this is gx. And let's say we have uh, here x modulo of 7 and here x modulo of 3. So if I have the data, um, for instance, x is 7, the hash, uh, the, the key is 7. 7 modulo 7 is 0, so and uh, so it's 0 plus the increment is 7 modulo 3 is actually uh, 1, right? So 1, so the position is 1. So I have a data here. So uh, let's say if I also have um, 14 as the data, 14 modulo 7 is actually 0 also, right? But 0 plus 14 modulo 3 is actually not 1, but 14 modulo 3 is 2. Therefore, even though the original position is the same, the end result will be different. So it uh, kind of uh, prevents the collision from occurring, right? So that's one of the techniques using double hashing. Uh, and if, for instance, um, Let's say, for instance, a uh, there are 
also uh, same method or for instance uh, same data inside after the uh, second uh, function you can uh, add for instance I have originally 0 plus 1 next if it's already occupied I will 1 times 2 if it's already occupied 1 times 3 and so on until it's not uh, it's empty and it can be filled so that's double hashing let's go on there's this final um, not final this is one of the uh, most common trick called chaining it's quite good compared to the other um, Polish and prevention method but and it involves as you can see um, a linked list and array data structure and people sometimes uh, tell you like and tell you tell me that um, hash tables are not simply arrays of linked lists and it may be true for some cases but in order to understand and in order to con grasp, grasp the concept of it it might be easily uh, understood as array of linked lists so what do you know so um, if let's say the there is a function and it ends up let's say the hash code is 6 so I want to enter another uh, data into 6 I can simply create a since it is a linked list I can create another node to uh, fill in the data here right so the data instead of being inside of 6 here I will move it to the new node and if it falls again into 6 it will fall into the new node what's good about this technique it combines both the property of array being able to um, fix the uh, like I can I can access it directly from the index and I can also have a dynamic uh, post dynamic um, dynamic allocation of a storage by having linked list as its content of array so yeah it's we are taking the uh, good part of the uh, linked list and both array too so uh, for you guys who are asking what's the complexity of this particular data structure and for all um, for all hash tables theoretically the best case for each uh, processes regardless it's being uh, insertion deletion and so on and so forth the best case is always big O of one so it's constant time where it's only theoretical in practical uh, it, it won't be always constant but for theoretically it's always big O of one and the worst case is only big O of n so yeah um, hash tables is widely used when they uh, have a lot of data a vast amount of data and when you um, often need to access and operate on the, that, that data structure so alright so basically uh, that's it for the um, introduction and of the, uh, hash tables and so on and so forth and I will drop the resources that I used in the uh, in the description below. And if you have any questions, you can always ask in the comment section, and I'll try to answer it, um, e even if it's in English or Indonesian, if you may. So yeah, um, thank you for watching. Peace.